around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers. That's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Sure is hot today, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. Used to get hotter in Sweetwater, though. Texas. Yes, sir. Uh, but I wasn't there very long. No. <laughs> what'd you do there, Chester? Oh, I was a salesman, Mr. Dillon. Salesman? <laughs> well, what'd you sell? Lightning rods. Lightning? Oh. Well, now, they're good things to have, Mr. Dillon. Why, I had a line of well, lightning rods... Well, now, don't explain you... it to me, Chester. <laughs> Too hot. Well, I'll go get us some beer. Maybe that'll help. I don't think I want any beer, Chester. Well, then, why don't you just go take a siesta, Mr. Dillon? I'll stay here in the office. <laughs> why don't you just leave me alone, huh? All right, Mr. Dillon. Hey, the marshal. Yeah, what do you want, Doc? A couple of cowboys been feeling their liquor over at the Texas Trail. That's what saloons are for, isn't it? Yeah, they were giving Kitty a bad time. Oh? She got rid of them now. But they're down at the end of Front Street now, making remarks and pestering the town ladies. It just might lead to trouble. Well, I'm not going to walk down there in this heat just to lecture a couple of hard-nosed cowboys. I'll go, Mr. Dillon. Oh, good, Chester. You go, huh? Just tell them to take it easy and leave the ladies alone. Yes, sir, I will, Mr. Dillon. Dillon. Texas, real men down there, not like these short grass Kansas. <laughs> All right, boys. Now that's enough. Who's this? The preacher, maybe. <laughs> boys, Marshal Dillon sent me down here, and we're gonna send you right back, fella. Mister Dillon said you can have all the fun you like, but to leave the ladies alone. That's the whole dang trouble with these Dodge ladies. They've been left alone too long. <laughs> yeah. yeah, what they need is a couple of big-handed Texas men. Yep. Look, now, now, why don't you go over there to the Alphaganza? I- I'll buy you both a beer. You will, huh? Well, that's mighty thoughty of you, mister. We just don't want any trouble, that's all. Sure we don't. And I got an idea how we won't have any. Wait till I get on my horse here. Stay with our friend a minute, Trevor. Hey, mister, I'll make a bet. What kind of bet? What do you mean? Any kind. You name it. Come on. Well, but I don't... I got him! He spilled his gun, Trevor. Pick it up and grab your horse. Get this rope off of me. Maybe it'll wear off, mister. You're going for a ride. Drag him. Tobo, drag him. Let's go. What? What? Who got Chester? A couple of cowboys. They roped him and dragged him out of town. Come on. Well, well, which way? West. I'm going with you. Hurry. Come on, right. There they are, but they're not dragging anything. They must have cut him loose. Oh, there he is, by that sagebrush. <laughs> Chester. Chester. Get that rope off his feet, Shiloh. Uh, uh, Look at him, he's bleeding all over the 
tore him to ribbons. I'll stay with him, Marshal, if you'd like to. No, Shiloh. Go get our horses, huh? I want to get him back to the dock right away. All right, Marshal. It's all over, Chester. I got you now. We'll be at the dock soon. Easy, Chester. Easy, fella. Easy now. I'll uh, carry him when you get tired, Marshal. I won't get tired, Shiloh. Not for a long time. Well, Doc? Yeah, he's in bad shape, Marshal. The worst is something's bothering his breathing. I don't know what it is. We'll just have to wait and see if it goes away. If he lives the next few days, he'll pull through. Oh, Doc. I, I know, I know, I know. But I'll stay right here with him. Now. Why did I have to send him? Why didn't I go? Oh, and I don't blame myself, I Marshall. told him to go, didn't I? Yes, but... Uh, Doc, can, can I talk to him? No, no, Marshal, no. Not for a while. All right, then. Would, would you tell him this for me? I'm going after those men. I'm going to bring them back. Alive. Or at least half alive. In the street outside, waves of heat move back and forth, making things seem unreal. Like Chester lying up there at docks. That seemed unreal somehow. I walked down to the jail and I went inside and I sat there for a while. And then all at once I got up and unbuckled my guns and I hung them on a peg behind the desk. And I went over to the Texas Trail. I'm over here, Matt. Sit down. Matt, I heard about Chester. How is he? Doc doesn't know for sure. Oh. They were in here bothering you. Who were they, Kitty? I never saw them before. One was a kind of weasel-faced man named Trevitt. And the other? Big man. Real brute. Named Stobo, I think. I see. What outfit, they say? Would it be the crow track? Yeah. The crow track's holding a herd up the river. <laughs> Thank you, Kitty. Wait a minute, Matt. Yeah? It's no business of mine to ask, but where are your guns? It would have been easier for Chester if they'd have shot him and killed him. But I don't see... So I'm not going to shoot them. If Chester dies, I'll see him hanged. Otherwise... Otherwise what, Matt? I don't know. But I'm going to bring him back and... And we'll wait and see. You're taking an awful chance. Maybe. Oh, Matt... Please be careful. Sure. Uh, Kitty. Yeah, ma'am. Look in on Chester once in a while, will you? Maybe oh, of you course can... I will. Don't worry about him. Thank you, Kitty. So long. Hey, uh, Marshal. What is it, Shiloh? I'll walk outside with you. Marshal, I want to ride after those cowboys with you. No, Shiloh, I'm going alone. But we could use you here at the jail. Here? I'm going to take two prisoners. I don't know when or how, but I need a jailer when they come in. So I'll bring them in with you, and then I'll... No. That's something I have to do alone. Marshal, you're a stubborn man. But okay, I'll do it. Keys are in my desk. Uh, Here's my horse. I'm going now. Yeah, uh, wait a minute, Marshal. You're not armed. I know it, Shiloh. Goodbye.
Who's the trail boss here? Where is he? Here I am. And I don't need any rider. Maybe not, but you got two riders I need. How's that? Just what do you want, mister? That's the Crow Track outfit, isn't it? That's right. I'm looking for a couple of your men called Stobo and Trevin. They ain't here, mister. And where are they? They come back this afternoon, picked up the gatherings and left. Didn't even wait to get paid off. I'm telling you this just because they're no good, and I'm glad they're gone. Which way'd they go? I wouldn't tell you if I knew, mister. I didn't think you would. Who are you, anyway? I'm a U.S. Marshal out of the Dodge. That's so? <laughs> well, I don't know what you want them for, and I don't care, but... How you going to take them, Marshal? Put salt on her tail? <laughs> <laughs> you ought to at least take a club if you're going after that Stobo. He's mean, he's big. Besides being a Texan. <laughs> We've hung Texans up here before, mister. Marshal. Yeah. I heard Stobo and Trevitt say they were heading west, following the Arkansas. Where are you from, son? Texas. Near Waco. And what are you sniveling around and forming on these men for? That Stobo kicked me. Knocked me down and kicked me. All right, son. I'll ride along the Arkansas. But you ride back to Texas and learn how to fight your own battles. Return for the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment. But first, the conventions start next Monday when the Republican Party takes over Chicago. CBS Radio's greatest reporting names and a corps of technical experts manning mobile units and studios covering the convention floor and corridors are all set to bring you history as never before. Whatever happens, wherever it happens, you'll miss nothing when you tune in the conventions on CBS Radio starting next Monday. Now... The second act of Gunsmoke. I cut straight down to the Arkansas and followed it west. I rode close to the water where I could use the sound of it for only my cover. After an hour or two, I spotted a hobbled horse alone. Stobo and Trevitt must have separated I got down and followed the animal's tracks as best I could in the moonlight until I caught the dying coals of a campfire on the bank ahead. To one side, I could make out the huddled figure of a man asleep in his blanket. It took a long time to crawl to his head where I saw the weasel face of the man Trevitt. His gun belt lay on a saddle blanket in easy reach. I stood up and heaved it out into the river. And as Trevitt sat up with a snap, I kicked him back. Don't shoot! Don't shoot! You sit up again and I'll smash your skull, Trevitt. Don't kill me! Don't kill me! Shut up. Now, where's your rope? I told you to lie down. Now, where's your rope? Under my saddle there. You gonna lynch me? No. But you may hang legally if you live that long. Now, keep your arms not blanket and lie still. While I get you roped up here. Who are you, mister? Yeah, that'll do it. Let's just say I'm a good friend of a man you dragged out of Dodge this morning. Stobo was in on that, too. It was his idea. He did it. Don't worry. I'll find Stobo. You ain't gonna leave me like this. I'll be back. You ain't even carrying a gun. Too bad for you, I'm not. Now, Trevor, I'm going to throw you across my horse and tie you on. He'll take you under Dodge right to the jail. When you get there, tell Shiloh who you are if you can still talk. And he'll give you a nice, clean cell. You're the marshal. I'll be back when I find Stobo. You can't do it, marshal. I'll die on that, son. Ride like that across a horse. No, no, listen. Stobo's about a mile upriver. 
We had a row and I left him. See, I, I told you, Marshal. Uh, let me go now. Trevor, how would you like to go to Dodge behind my horse with a rope around you? No, 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 don't, no, no, don't, Marshal. Don't kill me. I'll pack you on now. <laughs> Tied Trevor across my horse and started him off in the direction of Dodge, and then I forgot about him. Stobo was next. I rode west on Trevor's horse. Dawn was just breaking when I saw him. Crouched behind a campfire, cooking breakfast. His horse was saddled and stood nearby. I rode straight up, got down, and walked over. You lost, stranger? No. I'm not lost. Dobo. No tricks, mister. I don't see a gun, but no tricks. Relax, Dobo. I'm unarmed. Who are you? Matt Dillon. I'm a U.S. Marshal. Out of Dodge. You're a long way from Dodge, Marshal. Stobo, you and your pal had some fun with a friend of mine yesterday. You hurt him bad. Maybe you killed him. <laughs> you rode out here without a gun to tell me that? You're the craziest Marshal I ever saw. <laughs> I'm going to shoot you, Marshal, and bury you in the river. What do you think of that? I expected you would. Huh? But unless you want it on your conscience that you refuse to feed a man on the trail, you better give me a piece of that pork first. You're about the coolest man I ever saw, Marshal. Do I eat? <laughs> sure you do. Sure. You just stand right there across the fire and don't move. I have to shoot you before you've been fed. I know. It's too bad I... Only got one dish for your last meal, Marshal. A man can keep sassy on meat alone, Stobo. <laughs> yeah, he sure can. Well, looks about done. At least this here piece is. You can't... <laughs> All right, I got your gun, Stobo, so don't try anything. You burn me! You burn me! You Just a few coals that won't hurt you. Now shut up and get on your horse. Oh, kill you for this, Marshal. You can't hurt me like that. On your horse! Come on now. Get up there. Now, you just sit there, Sobo. I'm going to throw a noose around your neck, so keep your hands down. There now. Now, you ride toward Dodge. And you do anything I don't like, and I'll jerk you off your horse and drag you the rest of the way. Now, ride. Jail's on the left. You see it? I see it. All right, pull up. Shiloh! Shiloh! Well, hello, Marshal. This other one? Yeah. Trevor, get here. More dead than alive, but he's here. It was rough, Marshal. Real rough. Yeah. Shiloh, how about Chester? Tell me. Doc ain't sure yet, but he's alive. Lock Stobo up. I'm going over to Doc's. All right, you get down. Walk straight or I'll shoot you through both knees. Chester was asleep, but the Doc let me take a look at him. Seemed to me he had more trouble breathing than before. But the Doc said another day might see him out of it. And there was nothing I could do. So I went up for a steak and some sleep. And the next morning, I went back to the jail. Morning, Marshal. Is everything all right, Shiloh? Doc looked over your prisoners. Trevor's pretty sick yet, but Stobo's all right. Got a few burns is all. Nothing could hurt that moose. A hanging might. Sure, but what if Chester pulls through? You can't hold us in, Marshal. There's no law that says... I don't like the sound of your voice, Trevor. But you can't Be hold... quiet. You too, Sobo. Uh, Shut the door, Shiloh. I don't even want to look at him. That's 
Noble's a mean one, but I feel kind of sorry for Trevor. And go cry about it someplace else. I don't feel sorry. Don't you take it out on me, Marshal. I didn't send Chester off to do my job. I, uh... Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I'm, I'm sorry. Go get some breakfast, huh, Shiloh? I'll, I'll, I'll wait here now. Uh, I'll be back later. Doc? What? Well, what is the doc coming? <laughs> Chester. He's going to be all right. But... You sure? Why, of course, Marshal. His breathing suddenly changed. The pressure's off somewhere. Oh, he's going to be fine. <laughs> no, that's good. That's good. <laughs> of course, he'll be in some pain for a while yet. But... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right, Doc, I'll, I'll come see him in a little while. I'll tell him for you, Marsh. All right, come on, Trevor. Where to? Come on, I said. What's up, Marsh? I'll be back for you, Stobo. Now get going. Come on! <laughs> Stobo did it. Not me. You, you can't do anything to me. Shut up. Trevitt, your horse is down at the National. Go get on it. You turning me loose? Get your horse and ride, and don't ever come back to Dodge. Not while I'm alive. Now go on before I change my mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. sure. Sure, I'll go. do with Trevor. Put a knife in him. I turned him loose. Now, come on, get out of that cell. Am I free, too? You will be in a little while. So the doc, Marshal. Chester's... Hey, uh, where are you going with Stobo? Going to shoot me in the back, probably. That right, Marshal? I'm going to do what I should have done three days ago when I sent Chester after you. Bring him outside, Shiloh. Let's go, Stobo. Slow and easy. Bring him over here, Shiloh. You're going to drag me, is that it? You try that. That's what now. you do, isn't it, Stobo? Don't try. Never mind. Shiloh, hold my guns. Here. What the... <laughs> oh, I get it. You're going to fight me. Now, Marshal, you're crazy and I thought. Why, I'll tear your throat out. If he wins, let him go, Shiloh. Maybe I will. I said you'll let him go. All right, Marshal, all right. Maybe you are crazy, but I guess this is your party. Come on, Marshal. <laughs> I'll make it short for you. Real short. Stand back, everybody. Get back, do you hear? You're big, Stobo. But you're stupid. You're ugly, stupid. Why, you... I'll kill you! I'll kill you! No! No! Give me my guns, Shallow. Here. You don't look too good, Marshal. I'd better get that doc. He's hurt, but he isn't dead. If he can't ride, throw him on a stage. But get him out of here. If I see him again, I'll shoot him. Chester, can, can I come in? Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. My, what 
happened to you? I, I've been lecturing a couple of hard-nosed cowboys. One in particular. Oh, I, I see. I, I'm sorry, Mr. Dillon. Those two sort of got the drop on me. Yeah, they sure did. Mr. Dillon? Yeah. I've been thinking, and... And... Uh... Yeah. What is it, Chester? Well, Mr. Dillon, I, I, I'm not much help to you here. Maybe I better just... That's enough, Chester. Well, but I, I've been thinking Well, that... just stop thinking. Yes, Mr. Now, look, Chester, I'm going to tell you something. I, uh... I... I need you here. You see, you're the only man in Dodge I can really trust. The only one. Yes, sir. Well, you you can trust me, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, and I, I, I know. And I'm thanking you, Chester. <laughs> but you, you're sure no help to me lying there, you know. No help at all. Well, I, I don't even stay here long. The doc says I'll be up and around again. Look, uh, Chester, I, I, I tell you what. I, I'll go get patched up, and then we'll make Kitty come over and fix us some steaks, and we'll... We'll have some beer, too, huh? Well, what do you say? My, that'd be fine, Mr. Dillon. My, I'd sure like that. Gunsmoke, transcribed under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was especially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in tonight's cast were Paul Dubov, Lou Krugman, and Georgia Ellis, with Don Diamond, Gil Stratton, and Jack Crucian. Parley Bear is Chester, and Howard McNear is Doc. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Millie, this delightfully funny little secretary is heard from every Sunday evening here on CBS Radio. Audrey Totter stars as Millie, a gal with a one-track mind on the subjects of love and marriage, especially where the boss's son is concerned. Remember, you can now meet Millie every Sunday night on most of these same CBS radio stations. This is Roy Rowan speaking. And remember, tune in history starting next Monday. Hear the Republican Convention on the CBS Radio Network. <laughs> <laughs>